but who better than me? Welcome back to the return of the Fem Files. Now you might be asking yourself, how come I haven't seen these for like what four or five months? Something close to that. Maybe you're not wondering that at all, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Um, so I've got a fairly decent knowledge of the women's game. Um, I've been crowned as like this, you know, aficionado or avid supporter. No, I support the women just as much as I support the men to the same degree. But truth be told, um, my overall knowledge of like the women's sport, while it's decent, I don't know everyone and I don't know sort of everything. Therefore, um, once I kind of done the other ones, there was only a few other women that I kind of knew and a lot of them were more sort of mainstream. So I didn't really want to talk about the people that everyone knows because there's no point, you know, you already kind of know their story, you know what they're doing. Um, so the idea was to try and highlight some of the either up and coming women or the ones that you probably haven't heard much about for you to go and maybe have a look at have a look at their fights so if you see them in fights moving forward then you know okay yeah i know a little bit about this person they're a good they're a good test for whoever they get put in the ring with so i had to up my knowledge on some of those other fighters um, plus time permitting i wasn't really able to do as much as i wanted to that being said I've got more time on my hands now. Um, I've been able to do a bit more research on a few people. Um, got a few like good files sort of ready to come up after this one. So without further ado, let's get into this one so you can kind of see who it is I'm talking about on is this volume six or is it volume seven? It's one of those. You'll see it in the description. Okay, so the first person I'll talk about with regards to this, um, a newly crowned WBC light flyweight champion, hailing from Canada, was about five foot one, um, 31 years of age, I believe turning 32 in October, and that is none other than Kim Clavel. Now, uh, she actually beat Yesenia Gomez to win the belt back in July of this year. Uh, pitched a virtual shout out on the cards. Um, I think the cards are something like, it was 100 to 90, then 99 to 91 twice. Um, so Kim, the very skilled operator, uh, textbook pure boxer um, at those at those lightweight. She doesn't particularly get involved in, in huge scraps. She's there simply to do her work get in, score the points, get out. Um, you know, as an amateur, she that was very much the style she employed and that is the style she's employing as a, you know, sort of as a professional as well. Now, I guess it comes down to, is that the kind of style you like? Um, it's weird because normally pure boxers on a whole aren't the most entertaining. They're like, just the most clinical, they work, you know, sort of, they work through their, their process in the ring, you know, good fundamentals, good movement, you know, textbook punches. But they only really come alive when they're fighting pressure fighters because primarily a pressure fighter forces them to engage when they don't want to. Um, and Kim has sort of found her knack of being able to handle the pressure fight, especially at those lower weights where in the women's division they don't necessarily hit as hard. So it does make for entertaining fights. It's just a case that um, I guess maybe the risk of getting knocked out isn't as high. So you can kind of take more chances. With that being said, Kim the very skilled operator, 16 and 0 at the moment with um, three KOs. There's not a huge depth on her resume as to who she's for you know like name wise or anyone that most people would recognize but yeah um definitely you know unseating the previous reigning champion it was a good step for her and i do know that she's looking for unifications next 
as most of the women are to be fair uh, they pretty much are always looking to to unify because that's the way that they make money in the division so yeah if you haven't checked out that fight um, it's a good one to start with there's no point really looking at much of the ones prior to that they're you know they are what they are um, standard fair but she really raised their game in that one um, 31 so I'm not sure how many more years she's gonna uh, put into the game as a whole but um, Canada's definitely got a good one there so yeah check that out if you haven't previously okay so next person I'm gonna talk about um, sticking in those lower weight divisions this person actually is from the super flyweight division and funny enough this person is also extremely good friends i think best of friends possibly with michaela mayo now i don't have any issues with michaela so that's not a problem um but no they're also a former olympian they was on the same squad as michaela mayo was as clarissa shields was um you know sort of one of the uh standout programs for the the us sort of back in uh between 2012 and 2019 i believe <clears throat> I think she stayed on a year after that, but I believe she turned pro about a year ago, I would like to say now. And that person is Ginny Fuchs, or Virginia Fuchs to give her her full name. Now, yeah, as I said, she competes in Superfly. Now she had, I think she's had two fights as a pro already. I've not been able to see the pro fights purely because she's been on like the undercard for um she was on uh, i think michaela mayer's previous undercard on top rank espn however in the uk we only got um half of the card when it when it was broadcast so we didn't get any of the you know the undercard i know um like the espn people in in the us got to see everything we didn't get to see her fight i've tried to scour youtube looking for it can't find it anywhere so i'm just gonna have to go off the basic knowledge of what i know of her as an amateur and i do know that she is actually supposed to be on the um clarissa shield savannah marshall card uh next week saturday at the o2 arena now she's gonna be one of the um the prelims so i won't be in the arena to watch it but hopefully that will be on Sky Sports so I can, I can check out how she's transitioned to the pro game as opposed to how she was an amateur. But to give you a quick sort of summary of her, um, she was a pretty decorated amateur. Um, but her most noticeable um, amateur placement that I can remember was the uh, 2019 World Championships, I believe, where she lost in the final uh, she took home the silver she lost the final to a colombian called uh i think it's off the top of my head i can't really remember i just remember she uh, has some really pretty eyes it's one of the one of the uh, main takeaways i remember from from that fight but it was southpaw versus southpaw um and Ginny Fuchs, like when I was watching a lot of her amateur stuff, she she reminded me quite a bit, just in terms of stance. I'm not talking about in terms of style or punch selection, but in terms of stance, she reminded me a lot of uh, Terence Crawford, just like the way sort of she stood, um, you know, the way she had her the way she had her hands positioned, the way that she would look to sort of let off her shots. Now she wasn't. Um, extremely powerful uh you know and sort of uh, in terms of punch power punch placement but she did manage to once she she seems to be a bit of a slow starter but it's as like as soon as she kind of gets her rhythm she she starts to nullify and negate the punches that are coming back at her but it takes her a little bit of time to get into that so I definitely think based on what I've seen from several of the amateur fights that um, I have watched over the last several months, especially since I knew she was turning pro, um, she definitely looks like the pro game is suited to her. There are some certain boxes whereby you can just kind of tell the pros is where they're going to be doing their best work. And that is definitely where I see her doing her best work. now. 
she's 34 I believe so it's not like she's got a lot of time to you know there's not a lot of time to sort of make a run so I'm assuming that she's probably going to be looking for step up tests fairly quickly within the next year year and a half so um, if you haven't checked out that name keep an eye on that name uh, Ginny Fuchs Virginia Fuchs for full okay last but not least um, I'm actually going to take it all the way up to the super welterweight or light middleweight division and I'm going to talk about a very very hard punching Canadian boxer um, someone a la Savannah Marshall uh, very much in that type of mode and that type of style um, highly decorated amateur um, one has won several world championships I believe they won three world championships um, and about I think eight different Canadian um, championships as well and one Pan American Games um, recently come into the uh, the pro game at the well they came into the pro game at the age of 35 so they've got a you know they got a, a ways to go and to make up They're currently 37 but very decorated amateur from from canada um none other than mary spencer now mary spencer i believe she's between 511 and 641 i'm not sure exactly which one it is but she's very tall very rangy um some people may know her from the um, Olympic tryouts for London uh, for the 2012 Olympics. Um, she actually fought Clarissa Shields when Clarissa Shields was 17 and she was about 27 at the time. And it was uh, qualifiers, uh, I think it was a part of qualifiers in terms of uh, getting onto their Olympic squads to, to then go to the Olympics that year. And they was fighting at middleweight she was tipped essentially to win the entire thing like she had very you know sort of in the in the amateur game like everyone kind of knew her name she was that girl but in that particular fight she had with clarissa like clarissa schooled her in terms of like she was just too quick for her um in and out of the pocket she was just more active and in that point scoring system like there's no one better than clarissa when it comes to that but you could clearly see in that fight that they had Mary was looking more just to throw heavy effective shots whereas Clarissa was looking to be active and every time Mary would throw maybe one or two Clarissa's there sort of dying in and out throwing four and five and that was you know and obviously sort of poor countering at times slipping and countering making her miss and you know catching her on the way in didn't deter Mary so it was towards the second half of that four round bout you saw um, Clarissa start to slow down a bit Mary actually got more success and she actually tagged her quite hard several times um, where Clarissa would maybe have to dip and roll hold on and get the ref to break them or you sort of dip the head real low and then have the ref have to tell raise your head up so it probably wasn't her greatest um, night then but I, you know, having looked at that from back then, I said, this is someone that's, this is for the pros. You, I could just see, she, you know, a lot of the time they say that some styles don't win you amateurs. Um, hers is definitely not that. She she got a lot of her opponents out just by like blunt force trauma, essentially. Um, so transitioning to the pros, I've seen three of her pro fights since she's uh, turned over. I believe that she is uh seven and oh at the moment uh or possibly eight i know that she had four she's had she's on a four fight for this year no six and oh she's she's on a she's on a four fight for this year she had two fights last year when she turned over so um i remember she fought chris namas in her previous fight now for those who will remember that name that's the name that uh, Natasha Jonas faced in her WBO vacant title um, reign, uh, the title fight that she had on the undercard of Kel Brook and Amir Khan, where she became the super middleweight, uh, ch sorry, the super welterweight um, WBO champion of the world. So 
Whereas I think she got Chris Namis out in the second round, uh, Mary Spencer ended up getting her out in the first, dropped her three times to which by the ref waved it off as a TKO. And if you want any point of reference to what she's like as a fighter, um, I would definitely say she's a very um, aggressive, she's a, she's, she's a more aggressive version of Savannah Marshall without the, the switch hitting and fluidity. She literally like, she springs she springs in from the outside as an amateur she was very much uh stick on the outside behind the uh behind the you know behind the lead jab launching that right straight from the outside she decided to sort of become more of a mid-range type person when she was fighting clarissa so i'm assuming she probably felt that um at mid-range she Clarissa wouldn't be able to slip as much she could you know sort of get with bent arm shots a bit more than uh, sort of than the straight stuff but yeah she as a pro from what i saw she's very much yeah she's more of a mid-ranger now she's she wants to stay within that sweet spot for her kill zone um knowing that because she, she's taller with the longer reach and the chances of you getting to her before she gets to you because that arm is already launching when she's on her way into that range but yeah the punching power is real um and she is she's definitely looking to take over that 154 division she's gonna have to get a move on so as i said she's 37 she's not young um i don't know how much more years she's gonna have in the game she did have a very long amateur career so it will be interesting to see um she has actually got a fight um who is she she's fighting next uh i think it's this month or the month of september um She's fighting the person that Marie Eve de Care fought in her last fight to win her to, um, to win her belt back at 160. But the name is escaping me. I'll I'll write the name in there just to confirm. But yeah, definitely one to watch. If you haven't seen her, she's highly entertaining and she gets she does get the knockout, so she gives you what you want to see. But for now, um, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna do another one next week, seeing as we're gonna have the big all women's card. I might actually just do several people from that card. Maybe not the main, the main people, but um, yeah, some of the ones on the undercard um, that I do know and sort of can give a bit of insight on. But thanks for watching, and that is another volume of the Fem Files Down.